Is the primary color in your winter landscape brown? If so, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll share 15 perennials to add green color to your native winter landscape. I'll, I'm going to start with five quick points about the plants in this video. First, all pictures are from Southeast Pennsylvania. Second, all winter pictures were taken the first week of January 2024. Third, all the plants are native and less noted. Fourth, Winter appearances vary by species, so I listed each species I cover. Lastly, I noted if each plant is evergreen and will remain green throughout the winter, or if the plant is semi-evergreen and will lose its leaves before spring. Okay, first on the list is green and gold, which is considered evergreen. This is a great perennial to cover the ground in shaded areas. In the spring, small golden yellow flowers will appear. If you want to learn more about green and gold, check out our green and gold design video pictured here. Next is moss phlox, which is another evergreen. This is another great ground cover for the edge of the border. It's considered deer resistant due to its strong fragrance that deer do not prefer. But I've had trouble with deer eating plugs, so use caution if you have deer in your area. Here's a picture in bloom with the entire plant covered in pink flowers. Next is Beard's Tongue, which has large evergreen leaves that cover the ground. In the spring, Beard's Tongue grows quickly, reaching up to four feet by the time it flowers. This is one of my favorite perennials because I love watching bumblebees crawl inside the flowers to collect pollen. Check out our video dedicated to Beard's Tongue if you want to learn more about this perennial. Next is fleabane, which many consider to be a weed. I intentionally planted this because it's native and it forms a dense mat that crowds out unwanted plants. In the winter, fleabane makes a great contrast against the grass as seen in this picture. In the spring, the flowers are the star of the show. My only concern with fleabane is the large number of seeds that come with all those flowers. Surprisingly, I have not had any issues containing the flea bane, so this has been a great addition to my garden. Next is a verbena that is a low growing ground cover that prefers full sun. There, have, there are not many ground covers that can handle full sun and have an amazing flower like this one. The purple flowers are very vibrant and once established, verbena is a very hardy plant that is also drought resistant. If you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe while I move on to bee balm. I'm starting with this picture of the red spring flower to highlight this is Minarda didyma. Here is a winter picture which looks a little messy with all the stems. I want multiple seasons of interest and the low green growth combined with the tall stems really meets my needs in the landscape. If you want to learn more about bee balm, which is edible, check out our in-depth video that covers all things Minarda. Next is Coral Bells. There are lots of varieties of Heuchera, but this is my favorite because it's taller than the other varieties and I like the light green leaf color. It will lose more of its leaves in the winter, so I consider this a semi-evergreen plant. Here's another picture of Heuchera with wood spurge taken over the summer. The leaves of the two shade-loving plants have a great contrast. So, our next plant is wood spurge, which is pictured here, surrounded by leaves. It is a true evergreen with dark green foliage throughout the year. If you plan to add wood spurge to your landscape, add multiple plantings because it is a slow grower. Next is a non-native Lenten rose. This is another slow grower that is worth consideration because Lenten rose blooms in the winter with a showy flower that stands out from its dark green leaves. Different varieties have different color flowers, but my favorite is the white flower pictured here from the first week in January. Blooms will continue for the next month, making this a one-of-a-kind addition to any landscape. Next is wild ginger, which is another slow grower. This has taken many years to establish. Wild ginger is not known for its flowers because they are hidden below its leaves. I still love this plant because it plays an important role in protecting insects in the early spring as they start to emerge. 
Next up is a native pitcher plant, which I have in my pond. The plant maintains this reddish color year round, which stands out from the landscape and other plants in the pond. In creating this video, I discovered pitcher plants do flower, but unfortunately I've not seen it flower, so I don't have a photo to share with you. Next are sun drops. I'm going to cover two different varieties that behave differently in the winter. To the left is speciosa, which is native to western US, has a white and pink flower, and still has leaves in January as pictured to the bottom left. You can see it is looking a little ragged because it's semi-evergreen, so it will lose its leaves before spring. To the right is fruticose, which is native to the east coast. This species has a yellow flower and leaves that turn red in the fall that it will lose before winter, making this species deciduous. If you want to learn more about sundrops, check out our video dedicated to sundrops. Next is the barren strawberry. This is another slow grower that is great at crowding out weeds once established. This barren strawberry grows under Joe Pye weed, which provides shade in the hot summer months. When in bloom, barren strawberry has small golden yellow flowers. Be sure to keep barren strawberry out of full sun for a great addition to the landscape border. Next up is Pacara, which is pictured here in the winter. It looks just as vibrant and happy in the winter as it does in the spring. This is a versatile plant that can handle wet feet in a rain garden like pictured here in the spring, or it can tolerate dry conditions. Wherever you plant Pacara, just know it will spread by seed, so only use it if you're okay with it spreading out. Lastly is Yarrow. This is a hybrid variety, so I'm starting with a photo of the yellow flower, which is considered non-native. Here is a current winter picture in the landscape, which is a busy photo with all the stalks still on the plant. To get a good look at the unique leaf shape and color, I'll share this photo of a close-up. I love this section of the garden, but if I had it to do over again, I would use the native millifolium species pictured here that has a greener leaf color, including a white flower and a very unique leaf that makes this plant stand out from a crowd. Please subscribe to be notified as we post new videos and be sure to add a comment to let us know what you think or if you have other green winter perennials that we should add to the list. Thanks for watching.